I, I think there's often a mismatch between the expectations people bring to trading and the results, and this can be caused by a number of factors. It's a very important point, absolutely central to, to understanding how to make money in markets, is that it's not a question of intelligence. People of very ordinary intelligence can make a lot of money in the markets. People of very high intelligence can lose a lot of money in the markets. The principal requirement is to learn from your mistakes and to fight your, uh, and to understand yourself and understand your strengths and weaknesses as a person. And this is why when uh, trying to describe and talk about the virtues or, or, uh, uh, and weaknesses, but the, also the primary virtues of using charts to understand the markets, it's so important to concentrate on judgment, which is all to do with yourself as opposed to the objective evidence. The objective evidence is quite easy to assemble usually, but developing the judgment as to how good it is and how to respond to it is it, 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 very important. And I suppose the next most important point I'd like to say is that, of course, that the particular form of trading I'm talking about here is a percentage game. I think, I think almost any form of trading is a percentage game, but chart trading is a percentage game because we're not dealing with certainties, we're dealing with probabilities. So it's crazy to judge yourself on the outcome of three trades, 30 trades is more interesting, 300 trades is very much more interesting. So you cannot tell whether you're successful or a failure unless you allow between 30 and 300 trades to go by. The problem then becomes is, can you afford to stomach the possible losses by allowing 30 to 300? And that's where you have to gauge the size of your trades so that no, so 30 trades can go by while you're still testing your system. So starting small, is as true for an experienced trader as it is for an inexperienced trader. Because you must allow losses to work themselves out. There will always be losses. So you should plan for losses. The inexperienced trader will probably have poorer judgment than the experienced trader, so his runs of losses may be deeper. So all the more reason to plan for that long run of losses until you've learnt and developed and honed your judgment. Smart people can lose more money than, than, than dumb people in trading simply because that they're fighting themselves and uh, they think it's just a market problem, an objective piece of analysis required. It's not. Decision taking is all to do with understanding your own psychology, your own weaknesses and your own strengths. What's stopping you doing things? What's stopping you learning from mistakes? I'm sure a lot of people aren't aware it's a percentage game. I'm sure they think it's... Uh, I'm sure a lot of people think it's about hitting, for hitting sixes. The famous stories of Bunker Hunt, the man that broke the Bank of Monte Carlo, the um, famous uh, bet on sterling leaving the, 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 the European exchange rate mechanism. Um, these lead the romantic in us to think that it's a winner-takes-all situation. The more prosaic and sad truth is that trading is a lot duller. That it's a percentage game. It's not a question of excitement. The more excited you are, the less likely you are to make sensible decisions. You should see it as a... As a cold, downbeat business rather than excitable, thrilling, upbeat business. Watching CNBC and Bloomberg is helpful only in this sense that it might stop you over trading because you're too busy watching television to actually get down to any trading. The big problem with many traders is over trading and boredom, through boredom perhaps. Uh, and uh, if television takes your mind, I would prefer myself to watch a really good film, but CNBC might do the job. If it stops me trading too much, I certainly don't look to CNBC for information to help me trade. Certainly not. It's often said a lot of traders plan their trades, but they don't trade their plans. What can I say? As ever, the issue is judgment of mastering your own weaknesses, mastering your distractions, keeping a simple plan in and executing it. When you put in a trade, you should know the maximum amount you're prepared to lose on that trade. So whenever you put a trade on, you should know exactly when you want to come out of the trade. That should not, not change. Broadly, almost very, with very few exceptions, that should never change. The only change it should be is that when you start making some money on it, you might move your stop loss closer to the original level of uh, where you've taken out the trade. Uh, I, I see it this way. You really want to turn trades into one-way bets, by which I mean that you want to get that trade so that you can cut out for flat as quickly as possible. And then that's what I call a free trade. And we like that. It's a one-way bet, it's only upside. And if you create trades, which as soon as possible you can turn into trades with only upside, then one or two of them are going to come off. 
there is a there is a sort of vague phrase which I've heard, which you should only take what the market gives you. Very often it's a question of ego. The ego getting in the way of the market wants to go up and the ego trying to cool the top. The arrogance and egotism surrounding the notion of um, picking the top against the trend is doesn't need much analysis from me to point out its absurdity. Let the market show you what the top is and then get enjoy the ride on the downside. Don't anticipate, just read the market, look for chart, check your charts, do it time after time, get them all in order, the daily, the monthly, the weekly, or the hourly, the daily, the weekly, get them all in order, pick your time and go for it. Let the market tell you what you need to do.